All right, so here what I'm doing is I wanted to add the small elements and those elements, they are essentially to strap the gun to. Uh, so to add the straps, to be honest, I'm thinking, looking at this right now, I should have put that bit probably a bit further up front. Well, you know, it doesn't matter now. So yeah, that, that stuff to put the str your strap and, you know, hand it on your neck. Uh, it's a cool little part. Always, I'm always happy to add some functional details to a design. They were a little bit too thin. I actually, in the, uh, later on, I added a bit more thickness to those uh, holes, pin holes. So I don't know how it's called. Right here, I am thinking about what? I don't know. Ah, I know, I know. I wanted to add the holes to the front frame. Like uh, for the gas to go out. Well, like heat, heat, and gas. So I did the one cylinder. Then I decided to double it. So I'm trying different snapping options right now, just jumping around. And then I think in the end I actually eyeballed it. Yeah, I found it the just easiest part just to eyeball it, just trying to eyeball it precisely. Uh, works fine for me. It is for pity that. Uh, 3 code doesn't have like a live boolean option like you have in ZBrush where you could have those stuff where you could change it at any time, you know, change and you know, play the variation of the holes. So I'm pretty much constrained by those ones, like I've done them, and there you go. And I think those cylinders should have been a little, a little bit tapered so you get uh, more uh, like a cone hole rather than just a straight through one, but then I just I was like, ah, I just don't want to bother about it. Uh, it would have been easy if... Uh, that's a kind of issue with you, it's pretty cool. It's, it's harder to go back and modify it uh, than in some other softwares. But again, if you're designing, if you're doing a design, it's still faster than doing design through in ZBrush, in my opinion. Uh, a lot due to the fact that you just using so few tools, you know, it's really important just to have like three or four tools that you rely on. You don't get confused with all the different options and all that. Uh, here I'm just trying to fix uh, the top of the main frame because it was slightly rounded at the end, so I had to redo it a little bit push it downwards and then cut it. And now I'm adding the thickness to that part. And I'm just... Yeah, so now I have the holes in front of that part. I'm not sure if I needed the holes there. I probably should have put those two holes to the back. But again, uh, I cannot easily modify those two holes. <coughs> That's why I'm Uh, that's why I didn't do much experimentation there. I was getting tired with this whole thing. I mean, it still was a lot, a long time to go, but I was getting pretty tired. Right, getting the pot, and then here I wanted to do the extraction pot uh, asymmetrical, obviously. And. Uh, Uh, switch back to handle. Don't know why. I think I was just trying to. Ah, uh, it's, I decided to play around with the magazine design and how I looked at different magazine designs online, and I'm like, uh, some of them are a bit complicated, some of them are less complicated. I, in the end of the day, you know, end of the what I ended up doing is was pretty simple. I didn't 
want to overcomplicate it. But you know, I'm trying different stuff. All right, going back to the extraction port right now, I think. So usually you have a extraction port only on one side of the gun. Some guns, they are like ambidextrous. Uh, they uh, give you a key that you can block, uh, that you can actually redesign your gun and make the extraction port to be on the left or right side. I think uh, it's relevant to Famas. I think Famas had that particular design. I like because I, you know, I, uh, I'm not really a big gun enthusiast, but to understand the, how the gun works, I, I watched a lot of stuff on guns. Uh, forgotten, forgotten weapons uh, is a good channel to do that. I can pick a lot of information how they designed and why certain stuff is made, the certain stuff it's made, uh, and. Uh, Here I'm adding a button for, I think it's it's not a safety button, but it is, uh, it's blocking some of it, I think. It's probably blocking the bolt. It might be like an extra safety button, really. <clears throat> I forgot them now, to be honest. I need to check the parts again. So I'll, I'll just do... Just uh, figuring out how to do a little uh, button. It's easy to push. And uh, while I was doing this gun, I was listening to a book. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm with a really great memory. I've already forgotten the name of the book. Uh, it's. Uh, the. Okay, I'll just tell you the short story. It's about the guy who got uh, captured by Somali pirates. Uh, it's a new book. It came out like last month, I think. P pretty entertaining. I listen to quite a few books when I do stuff. And yeah, although they mentioned quite a few guns there, but it's uh, like a real story where um, there's not much action. But the guy was just been captive for two years and with so many pirates. Here you can see I'm doing what would normally be done with the texture. I'm adding the uh, like you know safety single fire and automatic fire you know icons. Usually they draw bullets there so I'm like oh yeah well circles would do the trick. Right, so I finally added the extraction port on the right side of the gun. I added a couple of holes. I just picked them up on the actual, actual MP7 and I don't know. Well, they're responsible for some kind of mechanical parts there, so, uh, but I wasn't. I uh, uh, can't really say in particular. I mostly just study the major parts of the gun and super tiny details, I don't really go into it. Right, I wanted to fix that back plate because it wasn't rounded like everything else. So I had to assign a transparent shader to it and then try to match it. You can see I hide the major part and I hide it with a circle. And that was about right.
decided to add some kind of pattern. I decided that this uh, <clears throat> looks a little bit boring, the, uh, the, the mainframe block. Yeah, oh, I did some kind of decoration, really. It seems to make sense, but it doesn't really make sense. So I wanted to put those uh, icons a bit deeper inside the gun so they don't stick around. And I did that. I just look at the gun evaluate and what I need to do. <clears throat> Decided to smooth it out a little bit because the magazine is slightly real life magazine is slightly rounded on the corners. And I decided to add a tiny bit of detailing. Quite a few magazines. Well, magazines quite often are curved, but I decided to go just with a straight one, straight design. Uh, do a curved magazine some later time. It's pretty easy to do inside. Uh, it's really cold. It wasn't really a limitation of the software, just it was a limitation of... Uh, not a limitation, I just said it looks better. I didn't like that bottom notch, so I decided just to ignore it. So that particular little part was uh, was kind of it was too perfect. So I decided to actually scale it up a little bit to fit the magazine, uh, like it's still uh, an alien body to the gun, uh, the magazine, but not like it's it was designed with the gun. I was trying to add this tiny, tiny bit, tiny uh, rectangular bits on the gun. Uh, <laughs> surprisingly, spent quite a bit of time to be honest adding them. I was never really happy about them. They never really look good enough. And if you notice, I have the I've pressed the F5 to turn on the shadows. Uh, just helps to understand how the gun looks. Uh, your like your how to say it gets much much slower when you have the you know real time shading on. So it's only like. It, I turn it on only for a few minutes to understand what's going on. Then I turn it off. You've seen that I've just combined those pinhole, those holes, with the with the body of the top uh, top frame, top body of the main frame, or whatever you saw it. All right, just torturing this piece. So and then I decided to do the muzzle brake as a modular piece that you can insert inside the front frame. And and designing this really like an alien separate element. All right, here I'm, I'll do the barrel like it like it should be nine millimeters. Obviously not precise, but good enough. So I'm getting ready to do the muzzle brake. So you can see here I've hidden that part, and I uh, decided to started to unhide stuff on the angle. I looked at a few muzzle brakes online, and uh, it's kind of eyeballed stuff. I think 
I'm just thinking now how else I could have done it. I could have done it by adding, um, you know, box, boxy stuff under angle and pulling it together, then hiding some parts. But I think I I, I bought it, uh, you know, all right. Fashion, so I mean, it's not really precise, but that's the job, I think. And when I look at the video, it looks like, oh, this guy knows, knows what to do. Oh, he's gonna go to figure it out. Uh, when I was doing it, I was like, God damn it, what do I do next? Like, uh, this is the right move. Uh, maybe that, maybe this. Uh, what should I do next? Yeah, it looks really easy. On the video. I'm not sure why, but I decided to redo the whole uh, muzzle brake thing. I wasn't happy about something. So now I have the transparency material on. It really helps to understand how to design, uh, like more complicated designs. So I turned on the grid. I bolted a bit better, but it didn't really help. So I'm unhiding the part using the, the transparency material and I'm doing it from the top. And it was another one of my favorite parts, I think, the muzzle brake. I spent quite a bit of time doing it and uh, you know, all kind of stuff. So essentially, and I uh, kind of read a lot about them, uh, the model breaks, how they work, and all that. Uh, having that particular one, probably a bit of an overkill, but you know, just want to do a cool design after all. What you can see here, I also have the ports that go from the uh, from the barrel on the top and the bottom. You kind of want, <clears throat> I decided, well, the logical one, the functional one, one is to have a port at the sides and at the top. Because you want to, uh, because if you recall the gun recalls, it jumps up, up. So you want to uh, redirect the gas, so the force is applies down. That's why I had the top hole in front. So yeah, there's uh, quite a bit of engineering thinking going into that. Let's put it that way. I just think if you believe in what you do makes sense, then it helps to design stuff. Here I actually have a depth limit with going with, that goes through the, all the volumes. A depth limit of like one. one. But I, I had some kind of inside deformation that I wasn't sure where it came from, but I couldn't get a round hole inside proper so actually I did the barrel piece the front barrel piece I had to recreate it I think yeah you can see I have that little hole there but I know I just clean it like that like by cutting this unnecessary stuff Yeah, just trying to figure out what the best shape for the inner for the muzzle and i thought that circle didn't look good enough so i made it to look like a rectangular so right now what i'm doing here i'm thinking about how this piece is going to be attached to the to the frame and the idea was that it's attached through the a few of the screws that you can screw from the sides 
but then it looked that it looked kind of weird. And I found that uh, uh, later on I'll show the way I actually approached it. All right, just trying to place a silent same place. So kind of about the resolution was too high, so I didn't match the pattern on the silencer. I didn't match the smoothness of the silencer, so I had to smooth it out the whole thing. I don't know. They also don't usually have muzzle brakes after the silencers. Uh, it probably doesn't make sense. So, but I don't know. You gotta do what looks cool. You gotta do what looks cool. Maybe it's a magic bullet amplifier. Who knows? Just want. I'm trying to match the. I didn't like how it stick around uh, the silencer, so I wanted to find a way to. Match it. So you see here also I was thinking about the screw ports uh, up front to make a screw port that you can screw in, screw out the muzzle brake. Uh, and didn't like that. Again, to do it uh, from the sides, so thinking if I thought like maybe two screw ports is uh, way too much, so I'll just have one. And yeah, you just have yeah, that always was like a bit of a pain. Just adding decoration in front using the square holes. Not decoration, but you know, probably got some functional idea behind it, but I don't too lazy to think about. Again. Playing around the screw, I, I did like the idea of having that angular, angled screw ports. They kind of they sound reasonable and sound that something that could have been done and can be done. Screwing it to the frame, but it just didn't look right when I did it. Uh, it was a constant issue. Decided to do cut to make it a bit nicer uh, frame hole. Wanted to add some stuff inside uh, that hull space. Just didn't look right having it all too empty. Right here, I felt like the back part of the muzzle brake was a bit too thin, so I used the transform tool to make it thicker. Again, just trying to cut the silencer, trying to figure it out. What should I do? What should I do to cut it out properly? And then I figured it out. I thought maybe you could use a circle, and circle looks right. Circle looks pretty cool. But then these holes were in place, so I moved them, used the circle again. Uh, the holes were still in place, so I moved them again. Uh, right, I'm going to be saying a bit ahead of the time. 
by a modem again. There's some decoration there. Yeah, so I wanted to add that <clears throat> pattern of the screw. Imagine that uh, you screw in a silencer on there, you screw in other elements on top. And I think at one point I just didn't have enough uh, resolution there, so I had to observation constantly. And also had to add more more radial symmetry stuff. <clears throat> like a uh, number um, points, radial symmetry points. It's just eyeballing it, but it eyeballed pretty nicely. And then I smooth it out so it looked pretty correct. Combine those two. Just did a hole there so that screw goes into into something, not like into a wall of mesh. All right, here I came out with a screw port, right? Hooray! I came out that I could actually have a screw port that comes from the bottom. And that screws the model in. So I'll remove that one and uh, yeah, just stick around to that trooper. I'm just having a light on the design, looking at stuff and trying to think what should I do next. I just wanted to cover a couple holes using the mesh inside. I thought it just uh, could be an interesting idea. A couple holes on the front frame. Going back to the buttstock, and I, I needed to add a um, <coughs> buttstock release uh, button. It's got it on the MP7, but in different place. So essentially, press these guys down. You press the, sh the spring, and you release the buttstock. I don't want to do the mechanical internal mechanism of that, but you know, I could, I could if I would have been asked to. Probably wouldn't be ever asked to do that. And then I wanted to add the screws on the back of the. On the back of the buttstock, and I kind of like the idea of uh, essentially when you add a screw port there, you kind of ruin the design of the buttstock. You know, it's great when you have this uh, sleek design without any screw ports, but what happens quite often in real life, you create this really cool product, and then the life interferes where they have to, you know put an extra strengthening strengthening uh, part here, a screw put there, and it starts to break the design. And this is what happened here, essentially. Like, I didn't design around the screw ports, uh, those elements that I had, but I had to put the screw ports because they made perfect sense, uh, perfect functional sense. So yeah, it's like functionality in fighting the design a 3D model, which is kind of cool.
All right, here I wanted to join all the spins together. Oh, well, I decided to go the to get at the pattern, some quick pattern uh, from another side because I didn't have an extraction port here, so it looked a little bit empty on the left side of the gun. And I decided to add the actual uh, no, space inside that part of the gun, the mainframe. So uh, I wasn't sure if I wanted to show the uh, the front of the <clears throat> like the inside of the um, of the chamber, but just in case I extended the magazine and uh, added the detailing of the magazine in the in front. Because I'll have to put a bullet inside and I just go into some extra hustle to do all of that. Alright, I decided to make the muzzle break a bit more complicated. So I'll just look how it looks if I just have it without anything hanging in the air. I look didn't look right because the bottom of the front frame started to look like it's untouched. So I started to add <clears throat> some patterns. Like you can imagine, uh, if it's a heavy metallic part that's maybe made of different alloy, then the frame, uh, they will try to make it lighter and by, well, keeping the structure in, so they would make a whole bunch of holes. And that was the motivation, that was like uh, the excuse for redesign of the whole thing of the muzzle brake and I just quickly dropped by to the laser side and I'm like oh there was a thing but bugging me about that there was the bottom was way too flat and I moved there was not uh, whole cover a bit to the left and then I went back to the muzzle brake. So I'm not the most focused designer. I uh, do something and I'm like, oh, I forgot to do that. I'll just do that <clears throat> and then go back to the stuff I'm doing right now. I'm deleting some unnecessary layers that are uh, just equipment space and uh, wouldn't be used in future at all. And I've just moved the bolt to the port of the muzzle brake. Oh, I mean, it's Screw them. And I think I made a break and decided to go and attach the paint to the body. First of all, they were asymmetrical, so I had to do a symmetry copy on the pins. And then I 
found an issue that one of the pin one, one of the pins was like uh, one million uh, voxels, and that was strange. And it, I could not combine that pin with the body because it would crash. It's really cold every time. So the solution to that, I just I had to delete that particular pin and duplicate another one, which was normal. I can see it's question right now. It took me like 10 minutes to solve the issue, to be honest. I couldn't disregard what was going on. So I'm trying right now, the pins are combined, but I want to smooth the out, uh, smooth the other, uh, outer part. So I'm, right now I'm using the brush and uh, trying to eyeball it, but when you do it, um, Manually, then it doesn't look that great. So I needed. I decided to use a stencil that will only isolate the parts of the stuff that I wanted to smooth out. And now, we, and now, then, we can get an even smoothiness around that particular pin inserted in the body using the stencil. This is more like an advanced tip. Hopefully, you're watching this one. But you know, I don't know how much of this stuff you can endure, really whole two hours two parts just combining the pin together uh, quite often the pins I see through you know or like I just didn't bother Just doing some cleanup with the lace. Sometimes if the parts have got a bit of a weird shading, it usually means it's not in the uniform space and you need to bring it to the uniform space. And here I'm trying to use a transform tool to add the indentation to the part and it just didn't look right. And I really, really, really use the transform tool to do any kind of extrusion tool stuff. I decided just to give it a try, and it didn't really work out. So adding some other stuff, extra decoration, I call it. I could call it. Right. <clears throat> Keep doing the muzzle break. And I found that little artifact there, so I decided to fill it. But then I forgot about the symmetry, and the symmetry also filled the top of that thing. And you can see I finally found that I had an artifact at the top. Well, uh, what I'm doing right here is actually I'm doing uh, kind of changing the structure for, because I know there is a screw that goes inside the muzzle brake in that particular part. So I'm changing the, uh, adding a different structure there that you can imagine that there is a screw behind. Took me actually some time to figure out the better way of doing it. And I'm do I forgot that my depth is on, so I was just unhiding, unhiding, and trying to understand why it's not working. And then I decided just to to uh, do it through the whole thing, and then unhide from the top, from the bottom. Right, so I wanted to do something more interesting uh, uh, for the front. Because it's... Uh, go quite creative about designing those parts.
Right, so I hit the whole thing in front. Ah, uh, well, I'll do it right now again. And then it gives you some freedom to unhide stuff. Gives you a circle to unhide, then rectangular. And then some diagonal stuff. It's gonna, gonna happen pretty soon. I was trying to find a balance of not being overly complex. I did like the random patterns I was getting here, but I was trying to see what else can I get. I quite like the uh, you know, crisscross pattern. But also when I press the delete polygon uh, button, it's uh, that... I've forgotten the name of that button, it's a button uh, next to your tab. Map it there. Right, so, and I apply this different, like, alloy, and I really like how it looks, I really like the... A difference in materials that you get here but the problem that you also get is that your front or my front frame just started to lose didn't look lose, didn't look uh like kind of lost the integrity like you know like it's got the uh it look like you know, it just doesn't have enough strength to support it at the back Hopefully you get what I mean. It looks a little bit strange, so in the end I decided to still keep it black, uh, the front piece, the muzzle piece. All like blackish. I, uh, I did save a different design when I just removed the bottom part of the front frame to use the different alloys. So if you see me smoothing something by hand, it's only because I'm doing it only only to see how it looks because I would never smooth anything without a curve or without something else because usually when I do it by hand, it always sucks. It's almost never good. You always have to use some kind of stencil, some kind of curve to do any kind of smoothing. Again, I really like this uh, combination of like uh, metallic and uh, you know, copper alloys. Uh, but <clears throat> couldn't really do it. And we're nearing to the end of this, so it's good. So I didn't do the front grip because I was way too tired and it looked, looked good enough already uh, to do anything like that. Just hiding and then hiding the elements, trying to evaluate the design or to see what else do I need, if I need. I, I, I quite look, I quite like how it looks from the back. Uh, uh, and I would even, you know, back and front looking pretty good. Back elements. And I decided just to make a symmetrical cut. Oh well, I was thinking about adding the, like uh, trying to fix the integrity of the front frame by adding a uh, whole column, columns from the sides, uh, these black uh, stripes. Uh, and that it still didn't look, didn't look right enough to be honest, look way too thin, uh, I don't know, it just didn't look good. 
and it kind of interfered in the whole thing. So it's like, uh, no, I don't like it. Okay, so uh, I did the decided to do the same semi-circled finish uh, for that uh, hole, and I duplicated it, rotated it, and combined those two stuff together. All right, edit the. Yeah, I kind of like the look of the copper alloy to be honest. It was these uh, with the shadows and all that. Uh, see, just my uh, attempts to maybe change the frame. All right, so I decided to try to do a different version. And what I mean is I thought that um, maybe that frame wasn't working out for me that great. So and I'll just try to get rid of the bottom part and try to put my emphasis on the barrel and the muzzle breaker. So I'm making the silencer bigger. And all that. So thinking about uh, adding more stuff, I didn't like uh, you could say more decoration around it, getting it a bit more uh, eclectic. Uh, like you, if you look at uh, Modern Gun, it's all got a whole bunch of stuff edited on onto that. Looks, um, looks quite peculiar, you know. It's got a lot of different designs, all different textures to that. So right now I'm just trying to. I uh, wanted to get some ribs on the on that part that I'm doing right now. Perforated part. So what I want to do, I want to add some lines. I'm going diagonally, so I'm going to unhide a bunch of lines. So originally I wanted to unhide. Uh, so I'm trying here. <clears throat> and now I wanted to put the lines in between the holes. Actually got this uh, perspective mode on right now, so that's not really good. Uh, something I've forgotten to turn on. Now I turned it off now. So I'm thinking if I could use, instead of using stencils, should I do it just by hand? And I think I ended up doing it by hand and just duplicated it in. Duplicating stuff. Again, stencils, these, um, they never give you crisp edge. It's a bit of an issue. But then they're so easy to use that sometimes you kind of like, juggle in between. The, either use the stencil or use the manual and hide. So yeah, I'm just uh, duplicating and eyeballing the difference uh, to put them right in between the holes. Just duplicating it all, uh, combining it, combining it all, and duplicating. The muscle break even bigger, so now I needed to add some uh, something, something on top of the muzzle breaker, just to make it a little bit more enticing. I was always experimenting with different materials, trying to see if adding some kind of alloys might look better. I did go for kind of all black look in the end, but. Very much, and it's quite important. Overall, I'm thinking about going for a bit more aggressive look, so this starts to look, I think, more aggressive and maybe a bit more modern. Right, so I decided 
to do something on the side. So I'm using the transform tool to move stuff around, but I uh, didn't like it, so I'll use the box height to just draw some extra patterns. Right, so I've forgotten about the backside. The backside is a bit different. It's asymmetrical. Uh, I wasn't really too worried about it because uh, it's done for like it's a tutorial on a tutorial basis, so I might even not have any renders done from that side. I'm turning on the real-time shading just to get a bit of a better feel of the overall thing. Uh, again, adding some like embossing or extrusion to the barrel. Not a barrel, but top. Uh, well, you could call it a receiver, any kind of receiver. Main, I call it the main frame, just um, uh, just because I like to use a frame rod. So I'm looking at the ribs, and I found out that my ribs they kind of didn't go through the whole thing. Well, I'll, we'll go back to them later. I'm just trying to redesign the back part. Trying to fix it because uh, I've done too many undos by now, so I couldn't really undo or. And then I forgot that uh, I didn't have my depths on. And all the uh, hiding operations, they've gone through the whole thing. So now I turn on the depths. Not really using a hold key for depths because I always need to know what, how deep the depth is. So I'm looking at the ribs here and I was thinking that I probably need need to do them a bit more sparse. And that's uh, pretty much it, yeah, that's what I did. I just cut it out and I forgot that I had the through all the volumes on, so I cut all, all the thing out. All right, so yeah, that was a pretty much your final design for the final angle for the ribs.
I decided to add that uh, extra safety trigger uh, on, on the right side. Quite a few guns have it. All right, so I'll be working on the back part on the buttstock and all that uh, quite a while now. Because I wanted to show off that the buttstock is a movable part. So I decided to do the uh, everything there. I kind of don't like the profile view of the gun when the buttstock is out. Then it looks a little bit too chubby and too simple. Something to remember in future. Uh, with the buttstock uh, slotted in, it looks it looks all right. But with the buttstock out, it doesn't look that great. So it only looks good for the front like perspective uh, renderings. Which I like my main rend my main presentation render is front perspective with the buttstock slightly out. But when I was rendering from the back, I would actually put the buttstock in. And I was thinking about the whole thing, how it would move in and click in. Uh, uh, I'll show it later. Just those are the holders that you press from the sides and you uh, help that helps you to move the uh, the butt stuck out. I mean it's pretty primitive, I was just thinking on my I didn't want to think too much about mechanical components. Uh, but at least that much. Now I'm trying to measure where these guys would go in, because it will slide in, then you want to press them all together to slide out. Secured by, by a spring in the middle of the buttstock. That would slide in, lock. Then you press the button to unlock and slide out. Yeah, there's some decoration to the uh, the rails. Yeah, trying to uh, generate a more complicated pattern with the intersecting parts and all that. Uh, there's a crisscross pattern going through. Keep on hiding and hiding all that stuff. Pretty standard.
Because the mesh is quite low in resolution on uh, this particular one. Uh, it's 600,000, it should be about a million. When, an unhide, when I'm trying to do a diagonal unhide, I get these really rounded shapes, which is annoying. But then I cannot really increase the resolution right now because if I increase the resolution, it will. Well, I need to delete everything that is hidden. And I, I still want to keep the hidden information. I don't want to increase the resolution yet. Okay, so they're doing the rods uh, for the uh, balls we're charging. Like anti jamming lever, and uh, yeah, it's probably never going to be shown, but you know, good to think about it. Also, I didn't think about it at the time, but uh, the bars for the rods for the uh, buttstock, they should have some extra divisions, because if you imagine it goes out for chunks of space, right? So we have to have some stopping elements there. I mean, you can think about it, like mechanically, it will be <coughs> held, held by something on the sides. So I could have thought about it to make it a bit more complicated and more functional. The rods added more divisions to the uh, to the extrusion there. You can see here that the backside, when the stock out, it looks a little bit too simple, just a flat, straight line. Me. Could have done a bit something a bit more interesting. But that uh, goes back to the really start of the. You, you need to get it sorted out at, at the really early start of the design. You can't really change it. I mean, you can, but I was just. Getting pretty tired with this piece, so I was like, just keep the bus stock in. So I wanted just to fix the top plate for the ribs because they uh, <coughs> end abruptly, and I kind of fix it like there, right there. I needed to redo the cap in front.
Let's create some backup volumes to have some volumes inside if I need them. It's also the part where I was kind of losing the track of all the layers I had, so sometimes I wouldn't know exactly what I have on and off. Again, I think you're getting a bit tired of the design itself. And this is one of the few instances when I just use the transpose tool to design something uh, instead of a voxel height. Could have done it with voxel height as well, and uh, well, decided that why not try transpose. It gives you a slightly different uh, look, and it can do slightly different stuff, but not too different really. Could have done it with the voxel height. Generally, don't like to use too much a transform tool and in, in general masking in in 3D colors because it's not really that good compared to ZBrush. ZBrush masking is really good. Like uh, my masking was one of my main tools in ZBrush. Uh, in 3D code, masking really was really painful, slow, inefficient. That's one of the things I uh, hopefully they gonna improve someday they do seem to be less uh, right now in the development stage it's pretty cool they do seem to be really focused on texturing and improving the texturing experience and less really just fix they only fix the box on this uh, voxel height just trying different materials right now just trying to figure out what's um, better I decided to make the, the muzzle breaker a little bit slightly less massive or like more intricate like more of an intricate design really because when I already have a, some uh, pretty complex structure in place you, if you do a few cuts you, you get some pretty cool results
Yeah, well, Mars outbreak look, looked a little bit too massive. Uh, the real issue here is that the barrel uh, silencer size is the same size as the top element. Uh, it's like a gas pod, what you can call it. Uh, the sh gas pod should have been a bit smaller. <clears throat> because like 50-50% ish uh, in diameter. Uh, that's not the greatest design I can make. Uh. Like a common rule is two thirds, right? So if it was if the, if the gas pod was smaller, maybe one third of the space. I mean, like 50% 50, 50 smaller, thinner, would have been better. Well, I decided to change the silencer. I think some some stuff I just changed because I get bored of it, <laughs> not because it actually gets any better. So I had to reset the symmetry and just jumping in. Because I already was experimenting quite a bit with the different shapes uh, on the gun, you know, different, getting a pretty eclectic, different designs and all that. I decided that it would be pretty kind of interesting if I could make the silence way more complicated than he, than it is. <clears throat> uh, it should happen in a moment, I think.
We are nearing the end. So almost done with the design. I'll the last minute we'll be just dropping it into Keyshot. And I just applied uh, one metal material to the whole thing. You can see here. Uh, really nice and fancy, uh, really not, not, no fancy materials, pretty basic, just playing around with uh, colors. I didn't even have any plastic material here, it's all metal. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much 30 seconds left. Yes, thank you guys for watching and uh, let's see you in the next video.